Could sugar doping be the key breakthrough that unlocks the huge potential of energy-dense lithium sulfur batteries? A group of researchers at Monash Energy Institute in Australia might have solved the cycle life issues of lithium sulfur batteries with a glucose-based cathode additive, which could make this high-energy-dense battery tech practical in real-world applications. Of course, more energy-dense batteries would mean longer-range electric vehicles and also lighter-weight electric vehicles and could be really important for the EV future. So let's dive into this potential exciting breakthrough. Although lithium-ion batteries have improved quite a bit over the years, they still need to improve quite a bit when it comes to energy density. For instance, the battery pack for a long range vehicle like the Tesla Model S with a roughly 100 kilowatt hour battery, this battery weighs somewhere around 600 plus kilograms or well over 1300 pounds and thus accounts for almost one third of the total weight of the new Model S. Although the long range Model S does have an EPA rated range over 400 miles with this 100 kilowatt hour pack, just imagine how the range would increase if this same 100 kilowatt hour pack weighed half as much. Weight, of course, draws down the range that an electric vehicle can travel because it takes more energy to push along down the road a heavy electric vehicle. In the future, lithium sulfur batteries hold the potential to drastically reduce the weight of a long range battery pack and could reduce the battery weight by around 50% or even more, which makes this new technology quite exciting. In a recently published research paper by the Monash battery researchers, they point to the theoretical energy capacity of a lithium sulfur battery being somewhere around 400 to 600 watt hours per kilogram. This 400 to 600 watt hours per kilogram would be comparable, for instance, to around double that of a 2170 battery that's currently found in the Model 3 and the Model Y. That battery currently sits at around roughly 260 watt hours per kilogram. So 400 to 600 watt hours per kilogram would be quite an increase over, say, current good lithium ion battery tech like Tesla employs in the Model 3 and the Model Y. Unfortunately though, as it seems like it's always the case with new battery technologies, there are a few technical issues that have been holding back this promising technology. As this research paper does point out, there have been several of the technical issues that have been solved by past researchers, like for instance, the challenge of low electrical conductivity of sulfur cathodes and the issue known as polysulfide shuttling, which from what I can determine, is the dissolving of polysulfide cathode materials in the electrolytes of the battery, which result in battery capacity fading. However, although past researchers have been able to solve the two technical issues that I just mentioned, there still is the existing issue, and this is the problem with structural instability of the sulfur-based cathode which as they point out in this research paper, leads to a very short cycle life of these lithium sulfur batteries. However, by employing a saccharide-based binder system, Monash researchers were able to achieve mechanically robust cathodes and achieve a cycle life of 1,000 cycles and capacity retention of around 700 milliamp hours per gram after 1,000 cycles. Now, while 1,000 cycles is not exactly a super impressive number, it is starting to reach the number of acceptability when it comes to battery technology. For instance, Tesla's 2170 batteries, it's widely known as Elon Musk said in the past that they're good for around 1500 cycles. So 1000 cycles is short of current battery tech, but it is starting to approach an acceptable level. Also, according to this research paper, the benefits of this technology goes beyond just the cathodes, but it also benefits the anodes of the battery as well. The research paper goes on to say, these beneficial properties holistically mitigate the damage to the lithium metal anode from which short circuits typically originate, ending the cycle life. So at this point in the video, this technology is looking very promising from what I've talked about already. The Monas researchers have solved one of the big problems, the instability of the sulfur-based cathode. However, there is another catch. 
And, and that comes down to the actual energy density of their test batteries not being quite as high as it might be in the future. As I mentioned earlier, lithium sulfur batteries have a theoretical specific energy capacity of around 400 to 600 watt hours per kilogram. However, as this research paper points out, they still have a problem of achieving high capacity simultaneously with extended cycle life. When it comes to the specific energy density they are able to achieve in their test pouch cell, they mention, a pouch cell prototype with a specific energy of up to 206 watt hours per kilogram is produced, demonstrating the promising potential for practical applications. So this 206 watt hours per kilogram is somewhere around half of the lower range of the theoretical energy density of this lithium sulfur battery technology. So they still have a while to go before they reach the theoretical limits of this tech. However, this number is also lower than Tesla's 2170 batteries, for instance, which as I mentioned earlier, have an energy density somewhere roughly around 260 watt hours per kilogram. So these lithium sulfur batteries still need some development before they're actually an improvement upon current battery tech, both in longer life and in energy density. There is also one other issue with this technology that I noticed with the data, and that's the battery degradation percentages after a number of cycles. In this paper, they describe a pouch cell prototype with an initial capacity of around 1200 milliamp hours per gram. And after 500 cycles, that same cell had a capacity of around 1106 milliamp hours per gram. And after 1000 cycles, it had an energy capacity of around 700 milliamp hours per gram. So if you start with 1200 milliamp hours per gram, which equals 100%, the degradation at 500 cycles, is around a 7.8% loss, and that 700 milliamp hours per gram at 1,000 cycles represents around a 41.7% loss. So at 1,000 cycles, you're able to only achieve around 58.3% of the capacity that you had when the cell was brand new. To illustrate these numbers beyond just percentages, if you had a 300 mile range EV battery pack, when it was brand new, it could drive 300 miles on a single charge. At 500 cycles, that same battery would be good for around 277 miles of range. And at 1000 cycles, that same 300 mile range pack would only be good for around 175 miles with these degradation percentages that they noticed in their research. For the first 500 cycles of this battery technology, the 7.8% loss is somewhat acceptable. It's slightly higher than some top end lithium ion batteries like Tesla produces. However, it's within a range of acceptability in my opinion. However, once you get near 1000 cycles and you lose over 40% of your battery capacity, that's a little less acceptable and shows that this technology still needs quite a bit of improvement if it's going to replace standard lithium ion batteries. If you're interested in reading the full research paper, I'll make sure that there's a link to it in the description below. And also, I'd love to hear from you about this battery technology. What do you think about this sugar-doped lithium sulfur battery? Do you think it shows promise for the future? Well, thank you so much for watching this video all the way through to the end. I'd like to take a moment to thank the Patreon supporters who support me every month and help make this content possible. A special thank you to my performance supporters and also the other supporters listed on the screen. If you'd like to find out more about the Patreon community I've set up and how you can support my work, I'll put a link in the description below. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm.